Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. We are learning CTS related concepts. This is lecture 55 and we have already visited few basic concepts of CTS such as CTS targets and building of the clock tree. And in this lecture, let us start understanding about power dissipation in CTS. If you have seen previous videos, then you must be aware that these are the CTS configurations that we have discussed already. While analyzing the clock tree, we check whether the targets that we have set in our specification file are met or not. Here are some of the goals such as cap and tran targets which tool try to meet during the building of the clock tree. Apart from checking these regular steps such as timing, skew, latency, we have said that cap and tran are also important. And also we check for power consumption since clock is power hungry net and is a high fan out net. Hence if somehow tool has inserted more buffers than needed in order to meet certain targets then there is a possibility of more power consumption which is bad for overall design. Now the first question is what is the problem in excessive buffering during CTS? As we mentioned earlier clock is a constantly switching waveform. The clock buffers and inverters used during CTS are implemented with a CMOS architecture. Hence when a CMOS switches we have learnt earlier that PMOS and NMOS both will be turning on and that leads to the power dissipation. Because of constant switching, the power dissipation component in each buffer and inverter will increase and that is not good for the design. On top of this, there are lot of buffers and inverters in the CTS that we already know. Now, what happens is, if you have already problem in one buffer set that that particular problem is replicated actually because of same phenomena of switching power dissipation. So because of this there will be a lot of power dissipation across the design. The problem of power dissipation worsens more when the certain portion of the design is not functioning at the full capacity. Consider the example of your mobile phone. When in sleep mode the chip will remain powered on but all the features of the phone such as camera and display are turned off, turned off. During this time the clock would be generated by the PLL logic and is being propagated to the block. But all the cells in the clock path would still be switching and even though the design is off and not functioning but still the clock buffers will be switching and that would be causing the power dissipation further. The solution to reduce power dissipation lies in the use of clock gates. We use clock gates to turn off a particular portion of the design which is not functioning at that moment. Hence whenever the clock gates are applied the cells in that portion of the tree will not be switching and hence there can be reduction in the power dissipation of that portion. Let us remove a half portion of tree to understand little more about clock gates. Consider that this portion needs to be gated and it has to be turned off. So we insert a gate like this. Now since we used the AND gate which is active high AND gate signal. So if we provide ground as an input to the other pin which is a gating pin then it will gate the clock signal. And hence because of ground signal as one input the clock will not propagate through the other pin. And hence the conclusion is if you have active high signal that is this AND gate. So signal will pass through only if you have high input at the gating pin. Now since we provided low input it is gating the signal. It will let it pass if we would have provided high input. And active low is when signal will pass through if we provide low input at the gating pin. That is all for this video. Please do let us know through the comment section what is your feedback about this video and we will come up with more concepts in the next further videos. Till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.